The next group of chordates that we see are the craniates. So these are organisms that have a skull and that skull is protective of the brain. So a skull that protects the brain. So actually the first craniates do not have vertebral columns. So they have no vertebral columns or column. So it's kind of controversial about whether or not these organisms had a vertebral column and then they've subsequently lost them because they have do have like rudimentary um, vertebrae, but they're, it's not like actually a vertebral column. So they're not considered vertebrates. So um, they are craniates rather than vertebrates. And so the idea that this skull evolved first and then our vertebral column evolved second, some controversy over that, that sequence of events. But the group that did become the craniates are what are referred to as hagfish. So hagfish are not lamprey, but they lack jaws like lamprey. So these are actually scavengers and they tend to live deep in the ocean where they feed upon carcasses like whale carcasses, like dolphin carcasses, large fish carcasses, right? So these are the hagfish. They are not the same thing as the lamprey. When we look at the Pacific hagfish, it looks like this. So notice that their mouth is just like this hole, right? No jaw, but they do have the ability to kind of eat their way into the prey. Um, they um, actually go into the prey and they wrap themselves into a knot and then they pull chunks of food um, out of the carcasses. The most no notable thing about hagfish is, is that they produce slime as a defense mechanism against being eaten. So they produce slime, which is actually just a mucus, which is actually just a protein that when it's put in water, it expands. So, um, so this is to protect against being eaten. So if a fish tries to come up and, or if you try to come up and capture a hagfish, it will release this mucin and it'll just produce this huge thing of slime and it can actually kill fish because it suffocates them. So that is one of their most notable characteristics is that. Now, um, the next group include the lamprey and these are the jawless fish. So these have a cranium plus a vertebral column. They, because they're jawless, they are anathens. So a means without a jaw. Egg napa. So these include the lamprey. One of the interesting things about the lamprey is as larvae, they are filter feeders. As adults, they are ectoparasites. on bony fish that have jaws. So when we talk about lamprey as being a pest or an exotic species that has invaded habitats, we are not talking about the Pacific lamprey. So the Atlanta lamp, Atlantic lamprey is an invasive species in the Great Lakes. So they have, because we created canals in the Great Lakes, they have been able to invade that and they have kind of taken over the ecosystem and they've caused problems. 
So when we're trying to talk about the elimination of lamprey. That's what we're looking for. The Pacific lamprey are what we have here. And we're actually trying to restore biologists, specifically those associated with tribal fisheries, are trying to restore the Pacific lamprey. These lamprey are anadromous. And what this means is, is that they have a life cycle where they go from um, freshwater to marine and then back to fresh water. So that is actually super important ecologically. So they start out as fresh water. In order to get big, they go to marine and then they go back to fresh water, just like some salmon species, and they come back to breed, right? So if you think about the ecological service here, our freshwater ecosystems, our rivers are relatively nutrient poor. So in order for like a lamprey to get big, they need to go out into the ocean where there's big fish and then they become big and then they actually bring nutrients upstream. And so this actually increases the amount of nutrients that we have in our streams, which actually tends to feed all all types of organisms. So it actually feeds terrestrial organisms. Um, and it also even allows for an increase in the growth of trees that surround these types of ecosystems. So this is an anadromous life cycle. So if we look at um, a diagram of this, this is the adult lamprey. You might see them if you go to McNary Dam and you see them at the fish ladders, they suck on, they have this suction-like mouth with this rasping teeth and tongues. And here they are attached to their host fish. Then they travel back up the stream to mate, to breed, and then they die. And then the larvae become built, sessile filter feeders and then they go back. So, the larvae can actually live in our ecosystems like five years, and then they can go and migrate out to the ocean for a couple of years, and then they come back. So if we were to look at an example of this, these would be lamprey. They are like kind of like leeches in that they, they are ectoparasites. If we go back to the phylogeny I wanted to show you here, notice that here we have the head this would be the hagfish. You do not need to know that term for them. This is the lamprey. They have um, a vertebral column. So that is them. And then in the next group, then we see the evolution of jaws. And the first group branching off with the evolution of jaws are the cartilaginous fish.